my name is Javier Ramirez, and as Brad stated, I'm the Products Director at Turnkey Technologies uh, for um, Dynamics 365 for finance and supply chain. So today I will talk to you a little bit about the credit card processing from the sales order uh, point of view. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about three different things. First thing, um, how we can enter credit card information into uh, sales orders for our customers, right? How the system is storing all that information on on the back end, okay? So what possibilities that we do we have for validation, okay? Disclaimers and things like that. So first thing is going to be the uh, credit card and information entering in the system. Second thing is like, okay, so now that I have credit cards um, already created for a specific customers, right? What's going to be the process once we create a sales order for them? So in this scenario, can you, as you can see, is we have a sales order. I'm selling a, a range speaker, right, to a yellow square. And at the time I'm creating the sales order, I can detonate a process uh, to request an authorization to the bank. Okay, uh, so that authorization that authorization just flow inside FNO or inside a finance and supply chain, okay, and it gets reflected on a history, okay. So the authorization code, which is the hash hash number, usually comes back from from the bank to the ERP, okay. That's my first step. So there's still no process or no not payment process. After I fulfill my uh, my sales order, then I'm gonna make the charge, right. So once I generate the invoice from the sales order itself. Well, the invoice creates automatically a customer payment that will be tied to the payment reference, right? That will be tied to my customer account. And basically, we are going to be settling the invoice against a customer payment. Okay, this customer payment gets automatically created and it's going to be ready for your um, monthly uh, bank reconciliation, okay? So that's basically the overview that I wanted to show you to you. Uh, how we can perform these three easiest steps, but talking from the control point of view, I think it's a huge improvement for a lot of companies that are selling their products and receiving credit card payments on top of them. Okay, so um, let's go and put some hands on the tool. Okay, so I'm switching right now to my uh, D365 finance and supply chain environment and I'm just going to put probably uh, or make this a little bit bigger As you know this is web based so all the functions that we have as part of a um, web page we can we can use those so I'm just adding a zoom in here so I have my workspace which is basically the area where I have the repository of all the actions that I that I will do but today I'm going to start working as a customer and create and collection agent right so let's say I'm a customer and create collections agent and I'm going to start looking into here into my sales into my customers right today we're going to be working with one of our customers the customer <clears throat> that I will be selecting let me see which one is with who who are we going to work today with um let's say We're going to work with this tray research, right? So let's pick this one, tray research. What we need to set up in a customer, and that's part of what I wanted to show it to you, is we need to set up the method of payment for the customer, right? So method of payment, I'm going to select it as credit card. That's the first setup that it's required to make this work. Okay, my method of payment, I will be displaying this. I will select credit card. Behind the scenes, well, credit card functionality has a different thing. So that's the first thing that I can do. And by selecting that one, now I can come here and type in credit cards for my customer, right? I can click a new button and you can see how uh, the 365 is uh, for finance and supply chain. Well, it has already a disclaimer, 
that basically is telling you that by clicking the OK, you are um, it's on your knowledge that you will be transferring information to Microsoft, right? That Microsoft does not collect, store, or transmit any of your payment card information. Everything gets stored in your bank or in your third-party pro products or services that are making the connection. Okay, so basic information: we can create a car cardholder name. We select these card types, which, by the way, are kind of the only ones that are accepted by the credit card processor. We have Visa, we have MasterCard, we have American Express, and we have Discovery. Discover. So those are the, the four types of card that this functionality supports. Okay, we will be able to enter a card number, expiration months, years, and addresses. Okay, so over here on the credit card node, it's where we put or we can put our C, uh, CCVs numbers. Okay, so in here. I can come and I can say, okay, I will do Luis Javier Ramirez, right? And I'm going to say this is going to be a Visa card, okay? And now I will basically just type in this. Of course, a lot of different applications and, and in here is where I need to talk about the technology that we have out there. If we have applications around this and we are scanning data uh, the data just can come and be populated in here so actually that's what happened when you are doing a, a, a purchase on any website is just scan your data and that goes through an ERP via uh, the APIs that are available between the ERPs and the providers so it depends on the application program interfaces that we have open so right now I'm gonna say okay so November right uh, 23 I'm going to save this record, I'm going to hit the OK button, and I'm storing a credit card. Okay, we can store as many credit cards as we need, okay, so there's no limit of this. What's the visibility for any user that gets into this record? It's just the last four digits of the credit card. No one in, 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 the, uh, in the organization will have access to see the full information of the credit card that was typed. Okay, and actually the uh, CCV code, it's not uh, reflected in here in any of these forms. Okay, so that provides us that security. And uh, well, basically, now we are ready to create a sales order for this guy. Okay, so I'm going to come here. I'm going to say sell. I'm going to create a new sales order for this customer. Okay, again. In this scenario, I'm just taking the most simple way to do it manually, right? But if you have EDI, EDI connected to FNO or uh, to uh, finance supply chain, well, that's going to get dropped in automatic, right? If you have any kind of interface via, um, I don't know, TXT files, that's also something that it's going to it's going to happen. If you have a website, right, by connecting the website with um, uh, finance and supply chain, we can have that sales order drop as well. So um, today we're going to work with this D001 mid-range speaker item. The reason why? Because I know that I have some on-hand inventory on it. Okay, so I have a sales price of $48. I'm sorry, $480, um, and I will be shipping out from here. Important things. At the time I create my 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 uh, my sales order, I will select. Right here, you have the credit card payment. I can select the credit card number that I will be using, or I can come here and create a new credit card. Okay, so. Let's do the following. Give me a second. I'm going to go back to all my sales, to all my sales orders. Okay, this is my customer view. I'm going back here. I'm going to take to all my sales orders. Okay, and I'm going to create it. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to start all over again. So I just want to show you where where else we can we can do this. I'm going to take my customer, 
okay i'm gonna hit the okay button and again i'm gonna put my um d001 okay so i'm selling or i'm gonna sell 10 pieces of this okay if i try to save this record it says that there's no credit card number specified right so which is good it's telling me hey you don't have or you haven't input the credit card number right option one I can say, okay, this is my credit card, the one that I'm going to pay with, right? It's an Amex, okay? And that's going to take me out from that, uh, from that error. Or another option, it's like, what if I need to create a new credit card for this customer at the time I'm creating the sales order, right? So I can just enter the register. I can just click the register button, and just like the uh, screen that we saw, I can enter a new credit card on the fly. Okay, so in this scenario, we're going to leave it with this credit card. Okay, I'm selecting my credit card. I already know what I'm going to sell. Now, the important thing is, okay, so how we are making the connection with the bank. If I go and hit credit card, I can take a look right now at the authorization history. It's empty, right? And that's because I haven't run this authorized step. So this authorized step, what it's going to do is going to send the information to the bank saying, okay, so we are trying to charge this credit card for $480. So the, bank's, the bank generates the authorization number and send it back to the ERP. So right now we have under the authorization history, we have this record. The authorization has been approved. Okay, so that means that we're guaranteed that there is money on, the, on that credit card. And once I fulfill my sales order, I will be able to collect that money. Okay, this is one of the, uh, the uh, credit card transactions that get generated in the system. Of course, we have an entire history of all the credit card transactions. This is our hash number. We have the authorization code by, by now. So my next step, yeah, it's like, okay, someone is going to fulfill this order, right? So pretty easy right now, I'm going to post a packing slip for this, uh, for this sales order. Okay, I'm going to hit the OK button. So basically what I'm doing is I'm shipping in the most simple shipping way that we have in, a, in finance and supply chain. Okay, and finally, I'm going to generate an invoice. You see this is a warning, it's not an error. The warning is telling me or stating me that this customer is, uh, it has a credit limit, it's exceeded by $164,000. The system can allow me to, to continue performing uh, operations against, the, against that customer, but all the time warning me or it can restrict me in this scenario I just set it up to make me uh, to make it flexible right so allow me to uh, continue the operations with this customer even though they are over their credit limit so um, I'm gonna generate now an invoice for this one right basically I'm gonna say I want to invoice whatever I shipped out I'm gonna hit OK, okay so you can see how the uh, shipping an invoice could be really really fast and now, what I will show you is that we should have in here a second transaction on the history, which is the finalization of the um, credit card processing transaction, right? The first one was an authorization. We had an authorization number. And now, the status of that is settled, right? That money has been taken out, OK? It's finalized and we have an approval on the payment method. So this is our same authorization code. The nice thing about this is that right now under my um, accounts receivable module, if I go to the payment journals, right, that payment journal has been created and posted. Okay, so if I go here, and I feel, I'm just filtering by dates, I can see that I have an Amex journal with the number 479, where my lines are showing this. Okay, this is my payment reference, right, from my sales order. Okay, so... That's basically the functionality that we have here. We have the ability to generate 
a new credit card from a sales order to generate or to enter a credit card information from a customer perspective. Okay, to create a sales order against an existing or against a new credit card transaction. And following all the way through, through the payment, we have the reference attached to it. Okay, so this transaction is going to be visible now in our bank reconciliation area. So once I receive my statement, I will say, yeah, I received $5,064 for this transaction. Yep, I can just mark it as settled.